What of the discovery of water on Mars? That's somebody hearing the news today. So that's very quick. I haven't had much time to think of water on Mars, but I'd like some here. Um, <laughs> what do the implications of possible life on other planets mean from religion? Well, nothing, so far as I know. As a Christian, you see, I have a database. As a scientist, I have a database, the universe. Francis Bacon, the father of science, talks about God's two books. The book of nature, we read it with our reason. The book of God's word, which we also read with our reason, notice. We don't switch off our reason when we're presented with the Bible, otherwise we'd be foolish. And it doesn't tell us everything. I mean, you must have noticed that the Bible is not a textbook of mathematics. I don't teach algebra from Leviticus. <laughs> now, that's one side of it. But the other side of it is, there are certain places, not very many, but they're important, where the Bible talks about the same universe that science talks about. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth is a statement about the physical universe. Every much as the Statements that comprise the standard Big Bang model of the universe, you see. So we've got to be careful that we don't make it an either or. But the Bible tends to deal with bigger questions. Roughly speaking, the natural sciences deal with the how and the why of function, whereas the Bible deals with the question of why of purpose and so on. That's a, that's a rough matrix. So if we come back to this, it's not telling us everything. Now, the mandate for the fundamental academic discipline comes on page two of the Bible. Did you know that? What is the fundamental intellectual activity? It's taxonomy, giving names to things. Some of you medics are suffering, aren't you? Every blessed bone in the body, you've got to know the name of it. And it's the same with the periodic table and all the biochemistry and all the rest of it. Names of things. It's the same in philosophy or applied basket weaving or whatever you're studying. <laughs> isn't that true? Taxonomy is the fundamental thing. And isn't it interesting that in an ancient text, which so many people dismiss, God named about five things in the universe, and then he told the human beings, you name the animals. That's the beginning of biology, isn't it? And God told man to do it. That's a pretty positive mandate for science, isn't it? Name things. And that's what we have fun doing in mathematics. Of course, we can name things anything we like, and I've done so. <laughs> it's, it's great fun giving names to new things and concepts. But this is very important because it tells us what those early pioneers of science had in the backs of their minds. They were doing a God thing. They, they weren't getting rid of God. They were massively pushed forward to do it. Now, if the Bible doesn't talk about Mars or even life on it, it talks about the stars a little bit, well, then we can go and find out for ourselves. But we jump to conclusions very rapidly. We think we found water, so we found life, have we? Does life exist where water exists? Now, I just don't know the answers to these questions. Is there life outside? Well. Paul Davis, whom I know a little bit, is a brilliant writer, science writer. He's not a theist. And he wrote a book, Are We Alone? And I was asked to discuss this book on radio with him. And he said interesting things. He said, you know, as a human being, I like to feel we're not alone. But as a scientist, I have to be honest. I think the science goes to show that we are essentially alone. And eventually they came to be. And I said, uh, Professor Lennox, do you, do you believe in any extraterrestrial life? And I said, yes, one very big one. He's called God. <laughs> and I meant that seriously. You see, even the Bible says this universe is not the only one that exists. This reality, as we think of it, is very complex. We've seen that at the microscopic level of quantum mechanics and so on. We've seen it in the difficulties we have in answering questions like, what is energy? What is matter? What is life? What is consciousness? What's the relationship between the brain and the mind? 
we're virtually nowhere on these huge questions. So there are vast mysteries in the universe, and we wonder at them. So my answer to the question is, I don't know anything that would affect any belief I have in God, because so far, it has held me in very good stead.